So we've got two of these front light clusters with the LEDs now wired. It takes a little bit of patience getting these wired up. So that's one light, that's one front unit, that's another front unit. The LEDs. And then you've also got the rear units again with the LEDs wired up. And that's one rear unit and not forgetting the other rear unit. There you go. And this one has the extra one in there as well for the reverse light. So they go on to the next step, put these onto the frame. So they got carefully not break the wires. So we need a few parts off of the part tree now. Um, so we need to bring this into focus here. So we need not just the two light systems that we just built and wired, the front and the rear ones. We also need part number one of parts tree OHPC35204. We need part number three off of parts tree OHPC35205. And part number one off of OHPC32205. And we also need one of the chassis members, chassis rails. This is the chassis rail. So this is the parts tree 35205. And we're going to need to get this part here. This is parts tree 35204. And we need to get this part here. And this is parts tree 32205. And we need to get one of these parts here. And we need to screw them onto the main rail. So we now have the parts to do step 14. So I have one of these ball joints. These screws I've already used for the lights and six of these OHSW01503s, these go in the chassis. So let's, let's build it up. So here's the parts, there's the ball joint and my screw bag with my screws in. And you'll notice I'm just getting the right amount of screws out for the step that I'm doing. So I'm going to take, first of all, because we've done our lights for our back lights and our front lights from step 14, I'm going to put in the ball joint using my screwdriver. And it appears it goes into the middle of the two. So I'm just looking at this the right way around, making sure that this will fit onto the chassis rail. So when we turn the chassis rail, it's going to sit onto the chassis rail. You need to go onto the middle. So excuse me while my fat fingers go into here. So there you go.
we are just making some threads in there nice and gently because it's quite soft plastic there we go I'm so glad I bought this particular rent, this particular Allen key, Allen driver, because it definitely fits better. So again, finger tight, not too drastic on there. So that's your ball joint on that bit. So we got to look at where this fits in. So again, we're looking on the drawing, and we're looking at the light cluster goes into the third hole in from the front this supporting goes into the fourth hole and the bracket I've just done with the ball joint goes into this end hole and then I should proceed on so here we go so we'll take one of these small OHSW 01503 screws, pop that onto there, take our chassis member, remember this is the, the last of the holes, and we're going to screw that through. Missed it. Let's try again. Thought it was going into my finger. Hope you're getting this on the camera. Let's try again. Oh, that seems a bit better. Okay, again, just finger tight. Don't need to go too mad. Then we got this stop. Looks like a stop there, so we're going to need to pop that it goes underneath it goes on the next hole along it goes underneath like that the next hole along so again there we go You see, it's just a little bit loose. Yeah, snip it up so it's finger tight. It's a little bit loose. Not always tighten it up a bit more. You can never once it's stripped. You can never you never get it back the other way, can you? So just feeling that a little bit by by a little bit delicate plastic. So you don't want to. That's here. No, it's not moving now. There we go. And then another screw. Again, this is the OHSW01503 screws. And this is now our pre made light. Get this the right way around, make sure the orientation is correct, so it's facing. Like so. It goes on the third screw in. Just lining up the holes. We 
we go. Make sure it's definitely on the right hole. Careful of the wires. I'm assuming that I'm going to need to line up the other hole. There we go at a later stage, but it's just for the sake of lining up now. Make sure it's lined up, which it is. There we go. So that's the, the front light system. And come back to the middle. We've got the running board to put on. So that goes. So again, that's another two of these. OHSW01503s. So then we can see that on the camera. I'm just lining up the hole. both sides of the running board so I'm just gonna add on to my screwdriver line up the other side and nip that to a nip again not too mad don't want to you know, this isn't a one tenth scale, so now the running board's on. There we go. And now we've got the rear light cluster. So the last screw onto the screwdriver. Oh, a bit more straighter will be nice. And this is then screwed onto the third screw in from the end of the chassis rail. And then here we go. And there you are. That is step. That is step fourteen. So step fifteen is effectively a mirror image of step fourteen. So I shall do that off camera so you don't have to see the same thing again. So there you are, that's now steps 14 and 15. You now have the two ladder frames completed with the running boards, etc. There you are, that's steps 14 and 15. So from the parts tree OHPC32206, which is always on the bottom here, we need part number five, which I've removed from parts tree OHPC35205. Again, stamped in the bottom of the parts tree. We need part number one, which I've removed. And we need from the screw bag. OHSW01505. We need two screws. Simple case. Taking the parts and screwing these in together. Nice and easy step. That goes over the locating lugs. And once we've done that, we need to screw with the two screws. Nice easy step. Put down there. We'll try the kit supplied screwdriver, see if it's any better, especially on these slightly larger screws. I think again up. Just fine. Just wish that this screwdriver had a, light, a longer handle. I think uh, for me, with my big hands as well. Well, not so big, but 
still bigger, big for these uh, little screwdrivers that they provide. Just a bit, I find the screwdrivers are a little bit awkward, so the tools are a little bit awkward. But uh, there you go, that's done. That's step 16. So I'm going to apply a little bit of liquid cement to the section of the exhaust. So use this in a well ventilated area because it's a bit smelly. And I guess if I pop in for good measure a little bit in the hole as well. There should be enough in there now to, to get a good good seal. So I'll pop that out to one side and oh, yeah. My tiny parts, so it should be enough. Should have enough time to put that in place and push that and hold that in place and sort of kind of maneuver it to where we want. There we are, about there. That's the exhaust that we're going to be seeing from the rear. So that pops the exhaust in there and then let's do the next bit which is this the rear uh, the rear step so the rear step goes inside there's like a recess in there and then this part is screwed on top Ooh. there we go oh might need to push that so we can see we can push that in a bit more so it locates inside there that's probably what we need to do I think so. Right, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Let's, oh, excuse me. Let's get the 1203 screws. Let's try this. Remember, I've not practiced or done a dummy run on this, so trying this live as we speak. The screw on the end of my screwdriver. Let it go through there. So let's try again. Pop the back step. Then what I've done is I popped the screw through the uh, plastic part for the that grips it, and then hopefully that should be enough. Here it does. So I've got one screw through the hole, and then a second little screw. like so finger tight that's all we need there we go I believe it should swing yep perfect and then OHPC 35 205 part number four that goes over these two shrouds and locates and then a couple of 1505 screws to screw those in place you can see how this wonderful little kit takes the time and uh, really does test your patience 
but it's a great kit that does it's coming together really well and the parts and the plastic parts are really good quality and there we go so that's that screw through and back to my um, mobile phone screwdriver that I had um, it just seems to fit nicely and this really rubber here which helps you twist the screwdriver while leaving the back bit in the palm of your hand so it's really quite nice and comfortable. There we are, done. Step 17. So steps 18, 19, 20 and 21 are for the mud flaps and in parts bag C you have these wonderful rubber mud flaps and I'm, and I'm not sure whether the camera is going to be able to pick this up um, I'll try but on one side of the rubber you've got a pattern uh, as indicated in the drawing it's like a, a, a pattern on one side and on the other side it's completely um, completely plain um, so you've got two of each kind um, so you've got the the drawing to to refer them to you see and um, as you can see from there so I've laid these out on their prospective steps and we're going to the parts tree OHPC 32206 and we're using the various uh, part numbers so part so number eight number seven number three and number two from the same parts tree um, is a case of um, I'm assuming this is going to need some form of gluing by the looks of things it says two-sided rubber but uh, it's going to need some form of gluing onto there um, so yeah we'll uh, it might be two-sided rubber I've got a feeling that's two double-sided tape that's what it means yeah two-sided rubber I think that means double-sided tape um, so uh, we've got some double-sided tape in the parts bag and we'll use the double-sided tape um, not going to go through each one of those steps um, it's a relatively simple step double-sided taping to each of the parts there uh, so that's going to be parts 18 19 20 and 21 So a bit of an update on here, I've tried the uh, two-sided rubber or double-sided tape on uh, on these parts. Uh, this is the um, mud flaps, that you get the rubber mud flaps. And uh, even though I cleaned these rubber mud flaps, uh, degreased them first to make sure there was no, no grease on them, I couldn't get them to, to stick to double-sided tape. Um, so I've resorted to super glue. So, um, You'll see them at the moment um, they're sort of kind of on but uh, using some old pegs just in case um, so super glue them together just gonna clamp those down for half an hour um, so you've got um, there you are and the same again for the uh, for the rears oh a little bit of a spider there move that out of the way um, so yeah and again same again on, on the rears there, let you see. Um, so they're, they're, they are stuck, um, but I'm just making sure, belt and braces, that they're nicely, nicely glued together. A um, little bit of peg pressure, and uh, that's them. that'll be them glued. And uh, we'll be, that's steps 18, 19, 20 and 21, all glued together and um, letting that cure. That's it, that's on to step 22.